नमस्कार न्यूज क्लिक में आपका एक बार फिर से स्वागत है आप देख रहे हैं हमारा बहुत ही खास कार्यक्रम इतिहास के पन्ने मेरी नजर से फॉर द लास्ट वन ईयर वी हैव बीन सेलिब्रेटिंग द सेवेंटी फिफ्थ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ इंडिया इंडिपेंडेंस एज पार्ट ऑफ दिस celebrations we in our program have also been doing a special series of episodes in which we have looked at various facets of the indian freedom movement and the uh, the freedom struggle as what we say now in the last episode of the special sequence or the special series of programs that we are doing i am going to be talking to a very special guest that is a a much celebrated uh, author and writer who has written a book let me show it you know book called her name was freedom and i am going to be talking to anuradha kumar now anuradha kumar if you would see you know is also here written as anu kumar now there's a slight mystery behind it in the sense you know that anuradha not only wears many hats in terms that she writes to adults she writes for the young readers but she also writes under different names anuradha kumar is her actual name she also uses anu kumar and she also uses the name of aditi k in several of her books including some for the young readers now if i actually start reading out the names of the books which i cajoled her into sending me you know which is well above but about nearly 40 of them then if i start reading them out we are possibly going to be consuming the entire program talking about it but there is another very interesting book of hers which came out earlier this year that is this particular book which is one man many lives which is bhagwan singh and early south asians in america now anuradha stays in the united states of america and she found the early history of asians as well as south asians not very well documented and she got interested in that subject so she ended up writing this book also prior to writing these books anuradha used to work as a journalist in india she worked for several years in the economic and political weekly now this particular book her name was freedom is actually a profile of 35 fearless women who fought for india's freedom this is for the young reader so first of all welcome to the program anuradha and uh, it's a delight to uh, connect with you we have been conversing over email and over phones for several months and somehow or the other we have not been able to do it but i felt you know that as part of this special series on the national uh, struggle and uh, the freedom struggle as well as the national movement that we felt that we should talk about your book especially because of what i found that these were you have normally written very personal histories and also of important historical episodes now can you explain to start off with you know why focus on women freedom fighters did you find that there was not sufficient material on women freedom fighters that they were not written about sufficiently and that too for the young readers young reader basically means you know that history comes to them essentially from what are considered to be boring textbooks it may not be actually boring but because they are textbooks they tend to be seen as boring whereas somebody like yours this book could possibly give them more reason to try to read and understand and get to know these women better to tell me about your uh, the thoughts in your mind when you began work on this or other conceived of it yeah thank you for having me on your show it's a pleasure uh, yes so uh, you know this is the 75th year um, of independence and uh, i found the subject very interesting and fascinating because uh, the material as you suggest um, is actually there but it's scattered um, it's scattered in uh, uh, various scholarly books and uh, periodicals and in the archives and mm-hmm. there's there was as and the more i i wanted to do something on this subject because to commemorate the occasion and the right. the, the more i 
I, I struggled to find out what I would write on or what I could write on. I, I found, found this this space, this absence of uh, their voices in the freedom struggle, uh, in the recorded freedom struggle as, as it has come down to us. And uh, I thought it's vital and important and very necess necessary to talk about these women who also contributed, who were not just secondary or marginal to the movement, but who contributed in their own way because they brought their own unique perspectives um, uh, to the to the movement. and. They uh, understood in in quite a uniquely uh, unique sense uh, the need for reform uh, in the social sphere, in the domestic sphere. So that that understanding that perspective was vital, and uh, and of course, making making up half the population, uh, their involvement gave that much desired impetus to the freedom movement, especially from the second civil disobedience movement that Gandhiji started. Uh, the salt, mm -hmm. the salt march, and uh, from yeah. 1930 and civil disobedience. That that's when about 30,000 people, yeah. as Nehru, yeah. as Nehru writes in Discovery of India, that that was mm -hmm. when women really marched shoulder to shoulder, and so many of them went to prison. I mean, mm -hmm. these facets I thought had to be brought out to the younger reader who are not totally distanced. Uh, I mean, most of our country's population has been born after 1992. And to write about the period, to write about people even beyond that, it, it, I thought was very important. And I saw that as, an, as, a, as a historian, as a minor historian, I thought I should, uh, I could do that. And uh, I'm glad I had this chance. Yes. No, it's a very important demographic group because if you look at sheer numbers, almost 65% of people in India today are below the age of 35. Yeah. And a lot of them have actually... Uh, you know, grown up on, especially the younger lot, even in the 35, are the people who have actually grown up on WhatsApp universities. You know, yeah, at least the, for the last last almost a decade, social media has been dominating the uh, the acquisition of knowledge of almost everyone. And we really do not know whether uh, how much of that is actually true and how much of that is actually mythical. So I think that is where writers like you possibly come in. So was this the reason as to why you, you know, the social media and the influence as to why you decided that this is going to be exclusively for the young uh, reader, this particular book? Uh, partly that, but it's also that uh, uh, my writing career began also as a, uh, mainly as a writer for, I mean, that's how people see me, a writer for, for young readers. And uh, I've been writing on history for young people besides, uh, you know, the most serious yes. history. I've been writing history for young readers for quite some time now. And I, I like doing it, you know, I like uh, bringing to the fore forgotten people, unfairly forgotten people and uh, letting the younger generation find out about them. And, uh, you know, uh, bringing, alive, bringing to life a time of the past, people of the past. I, th I think it's very necessary because there's so much of, uh, how shall I say, distorted history and going around. And uh, like I thought I should also do my part, otherwise one can't just sit back and uh, you know let a wrong kind of history uh, come to the True. forefront. So True. In fact, I was actually having a look at the list of your books and I found that for the young readers, you have actually written books on Gandhi and, uh, and yes. also on Subhash Post. So I think you have actually uh, you know, covered a fair amount of history uh, for the young readers. Now, to come to this particular book, you know, what I notice is that there are, you have profiled as many as 35, you know, women, and they were living both in the 19th century and also in the 20th century. Of course, there are very famous, iconic, you know, women from uh, the 19th century, including yeah. Rani Lakshmi Bai, Begum Hazrat Mahal, and, and of course, you know, Savitri Bai Pule, very important, uh, Salla Devi Chaudharani, you know. These are all very Rani uh, Chenamma, you know, yes. very important uh, leaders, you know, from the past. Now, how did you go about selecting thirty-five? You know, thirty-five is a very random number. I am sure that you would have been getting exasperated that oh, could you not have hundred of them, or maybe fifty of them, or maybe at least about forty? Or did you eventually have to, you know, actually search for these thirty-five women? Was it easy or was it very difficult? to actually uh, locate these women, or was it more difficult to whittle down the list? Uh, I'll answer that last part of your question first. Yeah. Yes, it, it was difficult to whittle down the list because uh, okay. there are a lot of women like um, I wanted to cover, like uh, people, women in Odisha, women uh, say from Uttarakhand. I mean, I didn't 
I mean, of course, I wanted to give a regional representation, a true representation of what uh, the women all over the country fought for. It wasn't just women in the cities or from privileged families who uh, rose to the challenge or rose, who, who heeded Gandhi's call or who took to revolutionary activities. There are all kinds of women in the freedom, uh, women who participated in the freedom struggle. But yes, I had a tough time trying to uh, whittle down these names to a reasonable number, like a round figure, like 30, 35, 40. And I, I was also concerned about finding the right sources for them, you know, uh, sources mm -hmm. that were not just, you know, hagiographic and not just uh, praising them to the skies, but something that would help me get a balanced uh, view of their lives and present it in a way that would not complicate things for the young reader, but also give them a sense of uh, what a complex person uh, this woman was, you know, because she had to, of course, uh, you know, st uh, face barriers against her participation in social life, you know, move outward, move in the public. And there were lots more, a lot, lot of more obstacles then to a woman's participation in, in the public sphere, uh, unless she happened to be privileged and belongs belong to already connected family. Really? So, yeah. yeah, so I wanted to bring out these complexities in a lucid way. So it was, it was a very challenging uh, thing, but I love that. You know, I love sinking into the lives of uh, these women and going back into the past. And I think I had kind of withdrawal symptoms once this book was over. <laughs> but yes, so yeah, it was, uh, I, I wanted to bring, uh, write it as richly and as complex uh, a way as possible and yet make it lucid. So that was the challenge. And uh, the more sources I had, the better I thought it was. The better, uh, better it would be. Yeah. Now, did you also survey the literature which was already available in the market, you know, for the young reader, what had already been written, either about these particular women or about, or a book of this kind or different other forms also? I really wouldn't know that what kind of literature is available, but I would want to just, uh, you know, ask you that, did you find any other literature? Say, for instance, you know, when we were young, we found a large number of this kind of historical things available through the comic book series. Amar, you, know? Amar Chitra, you, yes. had, you had that. You know, the Amar Chitra Katha, what okay. is it said, you know. So did you also survey it? And if you did, then what kind of, what was their content that you came across? Yeah. Uh, also, I studied history in college, you know, so. Yes, uh, yes of uh, course you did. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the one book, uh, the few books that really influenced me was uh, Shumit Sarkar's Modern India, you know, uh, hmm. very talks about uh, like the struggle for a modern notion of India began sometime in the 1880s when modern thoughts of organization and, uh, you know, uh, behavior uh, events themselves. And uh, Sumit and Tonika wrote those two volume uh, books on gender, uh, gender yes. and women, the permanent black publish. But yes, uh, ab about comics, I mean, Amar Chitra Katha and the National Book Trust publications, uh, there was this book on freedom struggle by Barun Day and others. Uh, mm. They were there, uh, but, but they were all, uh, I mean, I, I might have missed something in the regional languages. I'm, I mean, I speak Bengali, of course. True, true. But uh, I thought they were all scattered and isolated. And uh, this was a chance right. to bring uh, bring together in one coherent, uh, consistent narrative, uh, these women across chronology, across time and from regions. Because if you see the... The, the stories of these women begin from the late 19th century when Rani Abaka and Rani Chenama fought against the British uh, and how this, um, this struggle changed over time and how more and more women entered the public sphere as education became available to them, as opportunities became available to them. And so it covers the entire gamut from the late 19th century to the 1940s when Aruna Asaf Ali and Usha Mehta you know, acted with such distinction in the Quit India movement and the pre-independence days of 1945 and 46. True. So I wanted to cover that entire range and bring uh, uh, and bring to focus that these women fought shoulder to shoulder with men in different kinds of uh, struggle for the for freedom. Yes, I see that you you also had Sarojini Naidu, Vijay Lakshmi Pandit, uh, yes. Captain Lakshmi Segal yeah. in your list now. Uh, these are the kind of women who, especially in the kind of history which is being promoted at the moment in India, they hardly get any mention because they really fall on the other side of the ideological divide which is there in India. So did you uh, also make a very conscious choice to to include women who, are, who tend to get neglected uh, in these present times, especially in the historiography being pushed by the official circles after 2014? 
Oh yes, that was very much a big concern. I thought these uh, uh, these women were being marginalized, especially you know the Congress Party was the party, uh, the mainstream party that fought for independence. That was the vanguard. <laughs> yeah. So um, any anybody who seemed to be associated with uh, with Nehru was getting. Um, I mean, Gandhi Gandhi has become a different kind of mascot. So uh, that's another argument. But anybody associated with Nehru, like say Sarojini Naidu and the others, were, were getting marginalized. And uh, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur, uh, one has totally forgotten about her. That she she was the one who was the, in, the one motivating figure behind the formation of AIMS and the eradication of malaria program. She's hardly remembered. My grandfather, my mother told me that on reading this book, she recounted a story by my grandfather who was a doctor in Shingur. Uh, near mm. Kolkata, it's now part of Kolkata now, that uh, my dadu re recollected uh, uh, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur, you know, coming to these um, small hospitals and ensuring that the malaria eradication program was put in place and it functioned properly. And right. people hardly uh, seem to know her. So that, that was the criteria that uh, so many women have been, uh, you know, um, forgotten and other, and people who, are, who don't deserve it are getting their due. Um, you know, like Savarkar is a big hero these days, so, <laughs> so that That's was right. the concern, yeah. No, every regime has their own favorites, but I think, you know, what is also happening at the moment is distortion of history is very much yes. creeping in. And about Savarkar, well, a lot of that is being erased about his past and anyway, that is a separate story, you know. Yes, so yes. there's also something which is very important, which I just want to ask you, you know, the 20th century, we are seeing not only these women participating in uh, the, the national movement, but also that is also the time when some kind of an awareness is building up on women's issues. It starts right from the late 19th century, you know, from the big debate on the age of consent, then from the 1920s onwards, increasing it finally boils down to the Sarda Act in 1929. It continues. So there is a parallel narrative going on that you have the national movement in which women are participating both in the terms of, you know, in at the leadership also, as far as you know, mass participation of women is concerned in agitations, in programs, in coming out in meetings, but also there is a churning going on about women's issues, consciousness of women as women per se and different from uh, the men who are uh, leading, uh, you know, many of whom are involved in, uh, in, in the national movement. So, you know, did you also look into this or you kept that aside? Uh, you were very much conscious about it. You maybe kept it aside for a later subject as to for your young readers, maybe write a book on the, how uh, the women's consciousness uh, emerged in India. That was the interesting thing about it, that uh, uh, when these women participated in the freedom struggle, the awareness was there, uh, even subconsciously, that true freedom, true freedom could not come about without freedom in the domestic sphere. And I think the women realized it uh, quite well enough i mean it wasn't just pushed enough by the male dominating figures like say a gandhi or a or, or, or the others or nehru or others it was inevitable that you know political freedom could not come about without the necessary freedom or uh, freedom in the social spheres so like savitri phule and jyotiba um, they fought for women's education for right. um, you know emancipation of uh, the shudras uh, and uh, you know give, allowing them access to education and uh, you know, bringing about, helping about uh, widow remarriage and right. in inter-caste uh, marriages, like the Fules were really at the forefront of that. Yeah, and that's then, right. uh, yes. And there was also Pandita Ramabai. Yes. Another yeah. very important, another yes. very important character, you know, person from the 19th century. Yes. Yeah. I wrote on her for one of my scroll pieces, but yes. Uh, right. Yeah. But the figures that I, but, uh, you know, sorry, go on. No, no, I'm saying, you know, but you know, how, how many could you have possibly included? You know, you had to exclude some. That's what you were talking about, the predicament that you faced a while ago, you were talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah, Rab Rababai, um, I, I somehow, I, she did not quite en enter politics. So she was one of the uh, That's right. in, a key influential so, figure in all these women's lives, whether it was uh, the Savitri Bhai Pule or even Annie Besant who came out, right. Sarla Devi Chaudhurani. Uh, who started? Uh, you know, uh, she wanted women to be so uh, participative in the in the freedom struggle that she actually uh, set up fighting clubs and lati clubs so that women could also uh, join in. So for them, and 
uh, all of them were conscious at the same time that uh, besides the, the need for increasing political participation that was what which came about through the acts of 1909 and 1919 there also had to be That's reform right. in the marriage spheres so the acts of 1892 right down to 1929 the sharda act 1929 sharda act uh, yeah the same women were involved sarji naidu uh, kamala right. devi chotpadhyay uh, ari besant uh, they were pushing the, the the bills because for them it all cohered together social reform and political uh, freedom so yeah so both of it you know, there, yeah. there is uh, one woman who was there in the national movement throughout but one hears about her in the national movement very little i also have not given much thought of it till very recently when uh, tushar gandhi published uh, the book called uh, the lost uh, or the unknown diary of kasturba gandhi now kasturba has been a constant companion of mahatma gandhi right from the time that he got involved in public uh, life but very little is known about the kind of influence you know at least in the public domain especially among the, the people her real contribution in uh, either uh, you know assisting mahatma gandhi or, uh, or you know or or in any way uh, leading women inspiring women to participate in the freedom struggle you know did you look into this or this is also something you know like a lot of us it has not yet been you have not had the opportunity to look at it because of very severe paucity of resources me yeah i i i agree one should actually have a, have a entire book on uh, kasturba gandhi uh, thing is uh, i mean, i i wish i could, i had included her so it, i mean she was such an overweening presence in gandhi's right. life uh, uh, <laughs> that yes no, i i just, it is quite yeah, often I, said you know that behind every successful man there is a woman so it i don't think that they could have been you know this could have was absolutely correct for uh, gandhi ji is concerned you know that for every action there was kasturba at the back of it and you can always feel her benign presence in each of his activities you know till the time that she was alive yes um, also uh, also the, the i i think she would have uh, she she's also uh, of course complex in her own way how much of her thought uh, right. was derived from gandhi's and the complex and the exchange between them the complicated relationship between i mean any it was very complicated relationship yes so yes. Uh, i i just maybe i some of it some of it has been some of it has been written about some of it has been discussed but a lot of it remains unknown yes that that's no you know when you were studying these lives of these women their participation in the freedom struggle did you find them living in two separate worlds you know one as a woman and the other as a freedom fighter what what they, did they have living in two separate boxes or was it all all one mixed up box that they were operating from yeah the, i think for them their their lives uh, the parties the public life and their private personas the intermingling that's an interesting question that was the one thing that intrigued me how did how much did their uh, private self uh, exactly. uh, you know have an impact on their impact and uh, vice versa yes it true uh, i mean um, for i mean the, among the two women who really fascinated me in the while doing this book one was durga bai deshmukh and the other was uh, kamala devi chattopadhyay I mean, both grew up. Uh, you know, they had to, they had to struggle in their childhood. Uh, Durga Bai's father was a social work, worker. You know, who used to uh, hold funerals for those who were just discarded, the abandoned, and the discarded, and the neglected. And and she grew up seeing that. And uh, at the age of twelve, she did something very interesting, like you know, uh, raising funds so that Gandhi could uh, raising funds with the help of Dev Dasis and getting Gandhi to speak to them. and uh, i thought that was a very radical step so how how yes how i mean i can i i know what it is to be a 12 year old so how did the 12 year old at this time think up something so big so, so huge so important so yeah. important such a and, big canvas yes and she was growing up in this uh, small place kakinada kakinada was quite small then so yes. i mean what was she thinking about who influenced her i mean it is something totally unimaginable that a young girl of 12 could actually come up with this idea i mean uh, i mean i know she used to see her father and he, he was very encouraging of her uh, so 
I mean, it still intrigues me, and it, I find it, you know, even now I can get the goose flesh that uh, how putting myself in Durga Bai's shoes right. because it's totally something unimaginable to to me. And similarly for Kamla Devi, you know, her her father adored her, but he she lost him when she was just seven years old, and she must have seen her mother's struggle. You know, uh, she's uh, her mother's struggle when she was denied a share of the inheritance of her, her husband's property, but she was still determined to give her daughter an education and. Kamla Devi's grandmother, who was steeped in traditional ways, who used to go on pilgrimages, you know the the typical grandmother of uh, typical, that, that typical. we all know who who tells stories from myths and epics. That's right. But so how did this? I mean, and still encourage Kamla Devi to you know to reach for the stars, to think beyond uh, sure. just the limited life of being a, a housewife and a, a, really a homemaker. Some, some re remarkable lives and remarkable yes, stories. So, yeah, so I mean, I I hope uh, readers who 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 see this book get a sense of that, you know, that I'm from sure where that they, they came, will. where they came, and then the influences they had, and how they stepped out into public. It must have taken a lot of courage and an indomitable will, and they must have been special women. So I'm yeah. just uh, especially because women, of course, had to struggle because of their gender, the traditions that they had to face. And uh, I was simply amazed by them. I mean, I can just, I wish I could go back to doing this book all over again. Right, and uh, right. so, no, that is something which almost every writer can do that do their book once all over again. Okay. But uh, do you have any, uh, you know, favorites among these 35 women that you profile? Oh, all of them, no. I think so. All of, like, all of them are your favorite. <laughs> but like I said, I, I like Durga Bhai because uh, I just can't imagine because I, I remember what it was to be at 12, I mean, totally uh, retiring right. and withdrawn, but here she was. So, and uh, how your teachers and how your parents uh, shape you because uh, her true. father was just a social worker who used to go out at night, you know, sometimes she would accompany him and, uh, you know, give give these poor uh, abandoned people, you know, uh, people who, uh, who were of... Uh, lower caste, marginalized, neglected, and she would see him uh, give them a decent funeral. I mean, that kind of experience, and then she could, you know, magnify into to something so much big, and she dedicated herself to this kind of a life. It's to be, uh, similarly for Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay, I mean, uh, imagine her mother was made a, uh, her mother was widowed quite young, and still yes, she could right. uh, think of a, you know, bigger life, a life of much uh, mm -hmm. wider possibilities than was available. Yeah. You know, one last question. The other day when I was, uh, you know, speaking to you, uh, you know, while planning this particular program, you said that you were in Boston in the university archives looking at some of the research. So I was quite intrigued that what are your next plans? What are you working on? Oh, if you yeah. can share that, if it is not a... <laughs> no, you know. yeah. So uh, I wrote about this uh, uh, Indian writer, Shanta, Shanta Rama Rao, who's also mm -hmm. much forgotten. Uh, so she was quite a trailblazing um, writer. She, she, her father. She came from the famous uh, Venegal Rao family, uh, Chitrapur uh, in Mysore. Uh, okay. Her, her uncle was the one who worked with Sadar Patel in drafting the constitution. Okay. Uh, uh, and Venegal, her father Venegal Rama Rao was uh, one of the longest serving governors of the RBI. Uh, so and and, 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 a, and a diplomat uh, and all that. So Shanta Ramarao, she went to um, America. She studied there. She was a senior of Nantara Segal and others. So I see. She was one of so the you're first looking... at her life. Yeah, um, she she was uh, quite a. She wrote travel accounts and her own memoirs, and she had a very interesting, uh, you know, her own way of expressing herself, uh, which, which is which hasn't which hasn't become unfashionable. Like if you read Mulkra Anand. Uh, you know, he is distinctly a bit uh, old-fashioned, but not not Shanta right. Ramarao. So I'm I'm kind of trying to uh, see her, uh, see into her archives and see uh, what okay. can be written and stuff like that. Yeah. So we'll wish you uh, the best of luck with your next endeavor. And uh, when you write it, I definitely would be looking forward to <laughs> yeah. reading it. And thank you very much for having uh, joined us on this program and to speak about your very important book. You know, for the young readers to be able to connect with them and tell them that you they must know about the women who pl played a very important role in the freedom struggle and the national movement. Thank you very much.